Hello there everyone, this is Miriam from Paint Outside the Box and today I'm going to be explaining to you Dr. John Sarno's 12 daily reminders for people with TMS. So what are these reminders? So as some of you might know, Dr. John Sarno was the doctor who discovered or came up with the concept of TMS, tension myoneural syndrome, to refer to psychosomatic symptoms in the body um, that manifested in the muscles and the ligaments and in the nerves due to repressed emotions or highly stressful situations. So uh, in uh, his book, Healing Back Pain, Dr. Sarno explains how TMS works and then comes up with 12 daily reminders for people who want to overcome their chronic pain, okay, by tackling it as TMS. So by tackling it as an emotional problem rather than as a physical problem. So his reminders are in this book here, Healing Back Pain. And today I'm just gonna go over them because I think they're still very important up until this day, despite all the developments that have been, taken place. Um, they're still very important and to the point and they can really help individuals, you know, get on track in their journey. So just going to read each one and explain it a little bit more. So number one, the pain is due to TMS, not to a structural abnormality. So this is, you know, the main source of doubt for people who start out on, on TMS is that they are not quite sure yet whether their pain is due to an old injury or to something that's wrong in the body or only due to emotional factors. Now, there are various things you can do to find out, okay? There are various TMS questionnaires out there. Some people come to the conclusion on their own that their symptoms are TMS because of the way they manifest, okay? Because of the way, for example, that they coincide with stressful situations, okay? Because the way that the symptoms come up, it doesn't make sense structurally. And I have separate videos on this, but... Um, basically, this is just a reminder, okay, for people who think they have TMS or are quite sure that they have TMS, it's important to keep reminding your brain that this is not, the pain is not due to a structural abnormality because injuries heal, most injuries heal within four months, okay? Um, there's hardly anything or in the body that would cause permanent consistent pain, okay? So most chronic pain is due to the way that our brain is actually processing the pain. So there is nothing structurally wrong with you. Okay, so the second one, the direct reason for the pain is mild oxygen deprivation. Now, there ha this, this theory hasn't been validated. Um, in fact, these days we have seen research um, that has focused more on the role of the brain when it comes to chronic pain. Um, so according to Dr. Sarno, what happened was that this minor oxygen deprivation that happened due to our tension actually caused the, the pain in the muscles and ligaments. Um, I don't want you to get, I don't want you to get latched onto this uh, because it doesn't really matter what's happening on a physical level. We know today that there are many, many things happening on a physical level due to our emotional state, okay? So we know that the way we're feeling can affect the body in various ways. So there are various physical changes taking place whose root is actually up here in the brain, okay? So these days it's also good, you know, to interpret it as a neural circuit change. So um, something happens in the brain and the, 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 body, the brain starts perceiving sensations in a different way. Um, the, the brain starts overreacting to sensations and creating pain when there is no reason for the pain to persist. Um, but I don't want you to get too focused or obsessed on finding out what's really happening in your body that's causing the pain, whether it's actually oxygen deprivation, uh, which some say it might still be you know, applicable, whether it's something going on in the brain, whether it's something else in the body, doesn't matter if it's TMS, it's TMS and uh, there's a physical change or several physical changes going on, but it's all due to what's happening emotionally. So you still need to work on the emotional. 
So number three, TMS is a harmless condition caused by my repressed emotions. So Sarno was very keen on the role of repressed emotions, and I still think that's very valid today. Um, I think that stressors that we are already aware of um, can contribute to pain and anxiety, but uh, the majority of symptoms are coming from what we have been denying ourselves, what we have been um, trying to hide from ourselves, maybe certain emotions that we haven't been fully acknowledging. Um, so I think that this is still very relevant today. Sometimes we know more or less what's the problem, okay? We know that there's a problem, for example, with family or with work, but we don't allow ourselves to go deep enough. Usually, when we start to journal and do other emotional work, we realize that there's so many more layers, and this is what Sarno means by repressed emotions, okay? Um, I don't want you to get too worried about what you're repressing, because, I mean, repressed by definition means that we're not aware of it. Um, but I believe that we can get more aware of what's happening just by asking ourselves questions, just by being honest with ourselves and how we're feeling about a particular situation. Okay. So, so yes, um, I, if, 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 uh, if someone told me that he's not sure what's really causing the pain emotionally, I would ask this person to actually evaluate several areas in his life and think about any minor problem, any minor annoyance, whether it's obvious, whether it's minor, and think about it and how it's affected him and what feelings are being generated. Because if you do this often enough, you'll start to notice common themes, okay? You start to notice that, hmm, you're very sensitive to criticism or maybe this family issue is really bothering you you can't let go of it okay so what you're looking for are any negative emotions that you are carrying around and that feel a little bit stuck inside of you okay all right so number four the principal emotion is my repressed anger okay so anger and rage you know was another aspect that dr sarno liked to emphasize and that is again very valid today and uh, most of the time, you know, some people would say that I'm never angry. And I think that's, you know, that's a clear indication that there is repressed anger because I don't think it's possible never to be angry. Okay. So things happen in life. Okay. Things that irritate us, things that don't sit well with us, um, things that we don't like. Sometimes we wish to be doing something else, something different to what we're doing. Okay. And if we don't acknowledge these feelings, if we try to, keep up appearances and build a perfect picture of our lives as being perfect or of ourselves as be as doing you know everything um as as we would like to do um there, the anger will build up okay if we're p people pleasing all the time okay trying to hold everything together all the time if we're afraid to say no to people if we're we don't allow ourselves to enjoy life we deny ourselves simple pleasures maybe that can actually build a lot of anger inside and we might not be aware of it okay and when you start this work you might start getting a little bit angrier than you're used to and i'm here to tell you that that's okay that's always the first step to acknowledge any frustrations and any anger that you have inside because that's a huge contributor to to your chronic tms pain number five TMS exists only to distract my attention from the emotions. Okay, so Sarno's theory goes like this. The pain comes up in order to distract you from all of those repressed emotions that you have inside because you can't face them. You don't want to face them. Okay. I also have another theory. Well, not just me, but I also have the theory that the pain comes up to get you to stop doing what internally you really don't want to be doing. So let's say that you're people pleasing a lot and you're cooking every day and you're making sure that everything's okay and everyone's okay and you're neglecting yourself, okay? And you don't allow yourself to have a break, then the pain can come up to actually get you, to force you to stop and have a break, okay? So that's also, I think, a very valid, um, way of seeing pain okay like when you can't 
give voice to your needs and that the pain will come up. But the sad thing is the pain, we don't recognize the pain for what it is. Most of the time we think that it's another misfortune. Okay. And it distracts us from all the other things that are going on. It's just a new problem with a, for us, a bigger problem maybe than the other stressors that we're not fully acknowledging. Okay. And that's why it kind of distracts us from our emotions and kind of places us further away from the root cause of, of our pain. Okay. Number six. Yep. So since my back is basically normal, there is nothing to fear. So Sarno's book was focused on back pain normally, but not just. So he uses the, the back as an example in this reminder, but you can replace back with anything else with, with your symptom, whatever symptom you have. So since my back, neck, leg, whatever is basically normal, there is nothing to fear. How do you know that it's normal? Well, some people get MRIs. Some people have doctors tell them there is nothing wrong. Okay. Unfortunately, some people get diagnosis, which make them think that it's not normal and that there's an injury or damage. And in that case, they would have to work more on making a case for TMS on ruling out any other conditions, of course. Um, but making a case based on the way that the pain manifests. Okay. And, uh, there are various ways of doing this. Um, I always help people make a case for their TMS in, in my coaching sessions. Okay. Um, just to boost your confidence that you can tackle, um, your symptoms in this way. Okay. But basically, you know, fear is the main keyword here, you know, once you know that you have TMS, you have to remind yourself that there is nothing to fear physically. Okay. Because it's fear that would set you back. Okay. Fear in your body and lack of trust in your body. So this is what you need to work on. And in fact, the next reminder, he says, therefore physical activity is not dangerous because the problem with a lot of people with chronic pain is that they still think that certain physical activities are dangerous, that they're going to cause pain or that they're going to re-injure them. When you perceive physical activities as being dangerous to your body, you're going to fire the danger signal in your brain. And that means that it's more likely for you to feel pain during or after these activities. Okay. So it's important to remind yourself that if it's TMS, physical activity is not going to harm your body. If you're getting pain, it's just due to the conditioning. It's just due to your expectations, to the way that your body and brain have learned to respond to, to, to this activity. So the physical activity itself is a trigger. It's not the real cause of structural pain, so to speak. Okay. So next he says, and I must resume all normal physical activity. Um, now some people might find this scary and this is why I always like to start gradually. Okay. So there has to be some sort of resumption. There has to be some sort of change if you're avoiding physical activities. Okay. If you're at a point where you're avoiding this or that movement, this or that activity, you can't go on like that and expect to heal from TMS pain because if you are still avoiding certain activities, what you're saying is this activity is dangerous. What you're saying is my body can't take it. So let's protect it. Let's create pain whenever we're going to try something similar. So it's very important that you start challenging yourself bit by bit with physical activity, even if it hurts a little bit. Okay. There's, you know, there are safe ways of challenging yourself. Okay. Um, you don't need to go all out. You shouldn't go all out on the first day. Okay. You need to build your confidence bit by bit. Um, I know that Sarno's statement here sounds a little bit bold. You know, I must resume all normal physical activity. And some people are shying away from it these days saying that, you, you know, you just need to make yourself feel safe, um, which is true, but you need to challenge yourself at some point. And at some point, yes. If you want to totally overcome TMS pain, you need to resume all the physical activity that you feel like doing. Okay. You need to, to do anything that you've been avoiding and 
interpreting as dangerous. Otherwise, the danger signal will continue to be fired mistakenly. Okay. All right. So next, I will not be concerned or intimidated by the pain. This is another important one. Easier said than done, right? I mean, we're all concerned by the pain and most of us would feel intimidated in the beginning because it's scary, because it reminds us that maybe there's something wrong. Maybe we're harming ourselves. Um, and this is why the TMS approach can feel so difficult in the beginning, because there's obvious intense pain, but you're being asked not to fear it. You're being asked not to be intimidated by it. And that's not the way that we naturally react to the pain. But this is what you need to train yourself to do bit by bit, slowly. And this is what basically all TMS programs um, teach you to do. Or what all brain rewiring programs will teach you to do is not to feel intimidated by the pain. Because once you change your reaction to the pain, once you feel safer and more okay with the pain, you will get less pain and that eventually you won't get it anymore. Okay, next. So I will shift my attention from the pain to emotional issues. Very important one. So basically, since the pain is kind of distracting you from everything else and you think that, you know, it's your main problem right now, in order not to keep feeding the, yourself the idea that, you know, the pain is ruin, ruining your life, you need to look at the root causes, at the possible root causes. So you need to be asking yourself those questions. What's making me feel unsafe emotionally? What's making me feel not okay besides the pain? And uh, this is done very often through journaling, okay? By allowing yourself to journal and to be honest with how you're feeling, okay? Making sure that you're not lying to yourself, that you're not being too positive, positive about something that, that you care about and that's bothering you, okay? So again, shift your attention from the pain to emotional issues. You can also ask yourself certain questions like, for example, if you get a flare up on one particular day, you can ask yourself, you know, what happened, you know, today or yesterday that might have caused this pain. And you might think back, you know, to the people you met, the conversations you had, to something that happened that might have triggered a little bit more anxiety in you, a little bit more, more fear in you. And then you would realize that, aha, uh -huh, okay, so probably that was it. That's why I'm in so much pain now. So that's what he means by, you know, thinking psychological by looking at your emotions first. So next, uh, number 11, it would be, I intend to be in control, not my subconscious mind. Again, easier said than done, and it can't always be done, but it's good to create the idea that you have control, okay? That you won't allow the subconscious to always run the show for you, okay? The subconscious is very powerful, I know, um, but once we start to notice our thoughts, um, once we start to get clear on how we're feeling, okay, and once we start to realize that the pain is not really structural, that it's, you know, there um, mistakenly for no reason, we can talk ourselves out of it, okay? We need to feel in control. We need to feel that we can do something because there's neuroplasticity. The brain can change. The brain and body can change if we cultivate new habits. And that's, I think, is very, very empowering. Okay. And last but not least, I must think psychological at all times, not physical. Okay. So I have a video I've recently released about how to think psychological. So I encourage you to, to have a look at that. But basically, in short, thinking psychological means finding the psychological, emotional reasons why you might be in pain. Okay, so looking at your levels of fear, your levels of doubt, any triggers, emotional triggers coming from family, friends, work, okay, anything you're dissatisfied with. So all of the things that can explain why the pain is there, but not in a structural way. Not, not getting you to doubt whether it's an injury or damage, but actually in an emotional way, in a psychological way. 
Okay, so basically you always try to find the psychological interpretation and meaning behind your symptoms. And this will help you heal faster because if, if things start to make sense, if your symptoms really are TMS, you know, things will start to make sense for you and you will gain more and more confidence and will feel more and more in control. So everything will tie in together and uh, that's when you'll start to see the changes. Okay, so that's it really. I just read through Dr. Sarno's 12 daily reminders because I still think that we can learn from them. I still think that most of them are applicable today. And uh, because of course, Dr. Sarno's healing back pain has healed so many people over the years. And uh, Dr. Sarno is really the founder of, of this approach. Um, of course, um, recent research has continued to build on it and there are new techniques these days to help you feel more okay with the pain, to help you feel safer and all sorts of stuff. Um, but I like sometimes to go, go back to the basics, okay, because sometimes we need to just keep it simple, okay. So for those people who want to work more on their TMS or who want more structure and guidance, there's my online recovery program, which I'm selling on my website. Um, it's called Pay Free Breakthrough. I'll put the link in the description below. Oh. Yeah, feel free to have a look. There's also some free resources on my website um, to help you determine whether you've got TMS and to help you with some additional tips on how to you know, na navigate um, this journey. But that, that's all for today. I wish you all a lovely week and see you again next time. Bye-bye.